Can we read John 9 from verse 1? While he was passing by, he noticed a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, who sinned this man or his parents that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed and illustrated in him. We must work the works of him who sent me. While it is day, night is coming, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, giving okay. guidance through my word and works. Okay, let's read verse 4 again. We must work the works of him who sent me. While it is day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, giving guidance through my word and works. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today, I want to speak with you about a serious topic. Take it serious to your life uh, because of what we are reading here. Before the glory comes, before it you must be tested. Before the glory, there is a test. Before the glory of God comes upon you. There is going to be a test. We can see Jesus passing with the disciples. And when the disciples saw a man born from birth, they concluded that this man is having a curse. And then Jesus said, we must work the works of him. But the first thing, if you can read there, you will see that uh, they were asking each other, who sinned? Because most of the time, we know we refer bad situations that Anche, happens to us and say it's the result of our sin. And Jesus said, no, it has happened so that I must work. Because the works of God is the glory of God. The glory of God is there to show the power of God at work. Tell me about the glory of God is the power of God at work. Is the works of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But before that glory comes, you are tested. And the Bible says that they were complaining, but Jesus said in verse 4, I must work the works of for him because there will be a night where no one can work. I was reading after all, verse 24. Mm -hmm. I was reading after all, verse 24. After the works of, of him was, was manifested. If we read verse 24, he says, they came to him and say, now uh, they call him and say, can you give God the glory? And he answered and said, whether, okay, let me just read again. We know this man is a sinner. But 25, he said, whether he's a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, though I was blind, now I can see. We are several more now for the shank Again, 
ne kile sifofu mara jwa no ngi ya bona the man was born blind mona o be le lwa le sifofu in the church but ba mo kerekeng began to say no this is a curse para en twe ke mahlolo kotsi and then others say maybe his parents sinned ma o nga ba ra he mo thop mo kita ba ya batswadi is him who sinned we o ba ke yena sinche o sinta le ka ai ka rubele lwa le ka ona mogwa and jesus say no this is the works of his work a wa ke mi shumo ena ke sonjo re ke shume if you can read here you will begin to see that na o ba la mo tlo le thomo le mo gore always in every situation die mo ka mo ka mithai there's a level you need to go for wona le siye mo so tsontsho ruye go sona and at that level it shows the glory of god and as you must also see bontsha le taula modimo is god who bring it ke modimo a tisha o se mo se o jesus says we have to work you know in linjeng le jeso go re rena re sontsho shuma us to remove this man to a level where he is crying for o re rena re ntshe mo se mo se a le go sona ra rete modimo re tsontsho motosha so this man was tested so mona o ela lekwa the issue of him that his eyes were open was not over ta ba ya hore matho a ya bolele jo no wa bona ya fella mo he have to speak is jesus ba tsonjo tsonjo ra bolela go no bolela hore ke jesu and the bible says here by the lord they call him ma mecha when they call him they ask him ma mecha ba mutshisha what happened to you ba re go dira ga tsheng we know this man is a sinner ah wa tse ba re motho ke moetsa dibi i wanted to tell you that If this this man might have said Jesus is a sinner if he could now, be blind again now we let you come along are Jesus ke moetsa dibe na ka no fofala ga bedi but the bible says he say i don't care whether this is sinner bible like na tabo re ke moetsa dibo ga ke moetsa dibo ya pass the test a fita tiko yeo remember the first test was he was blind tiko ya pele ke ya hore yena o fodishitswe and he passed the test because Jesus did it. The second way you must affirm it by his mouth. And when he said, I don't care. I can't give God's glory. And leave this man. He says, I perceive this man is a prophet. Because he knows that God can hear a prayer of a sinner. This man passed his test. And that test brought Jesus to him. After he passed the test, Jesus came to him. Let's read the last scriptures here. We understand that this man he was also in a test. After the parents they say no he can speak for himself mara wa ke monna wa gono te bolelela and then when he was called when he spoke that a ba mmitsa yo bolela i know that jesus is not a sinner or what but what i know what he did for me is the glory of god ke a tse bora ka la ba ya ba le moetsa di ba se moetsa di bo ba tse mo ka o fela tsona mara no ke itsebang ke ye ne ke le sefofu jo no nke ya bona look at these scriptures you'll be surprised are level le mangwalo a share tlo makana verse 35 mola go verse 35 jesus heard that they had cast him out jesu a kore ba mokubile ba molelekile when he found him a mothotse he said to him do you believe in the son of god are we at dumela go murwa motho na he answered and said who is he lord that i may believe in him and jesus said to him you have both seen him it is he who is talking with you then he said lord i believe and he worship him listen to this uh, today i want to tell you that there is no glory without a test i wanna let her oh most nengtiko for this man ore monna o to be healed a fole was for the glory of god to be visible good year ore let her la modimo le tele bona hale but for him to be tested mara ore yena le kulwe by them so that he must insult jesus ore a ta roge jesus was for him to stand with Jesus. Na o die la ore yena ta gona o yema le Jesus. So when he stood up to say I know I know this man I don't care whether he's what what you say. But I believe in him. 
Jesus came to him. I don't know if you're hearing that. In other words, there's no promotion in spirit unless you are tested. And whoever is not tested has never been trusted. Because already here you could see this man, Jesus trusted him. He came to him. In other words, the presence of Jesus was there. That is why this man was able to worship. That is why in 1 Peter 4:12. You could see Peter saying, brethren. 12 to 16. 12 to 16. Do not be surprised when you go through trials. Just read that verse from 12. From verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you. That is to test the quality of your faith as though something strange or unusual were happening to you. But in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, keep on rejoicing so that when his glory filled with his radiance and splendor is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. If you are insulted and reviled for bearing the name of Christ, you are blessed, happy with life, joy, and comfort in God's salvation regardless of your circumstances because the spirit of glory and of God is resting on you and indwelling you. He whom they curse you glorify. Okay, I want us to look at the scripture in this way. Here Peter said, you people, you are facing all these problems. Because in Christianity, we were not promised, I mean, a smooth life. All these things, count them as tests. You are being tested, but there will be a time where the glory will be revealed. Look at this. One of our challenges today, challenge we are looking at what we are facing. And we spend time praying, focusing on them. We want to change our situations. But here Peter says, all these manifold temptations, trials. Can you just rejoice because there will be a day where Jesus will appear? Hallelujah. Amen. It says all these things that you are going through. The suffering you are going through. Maybe you are reviled for his name. Know that even those who don't believe by the day of visitation, they will glorify your God. If you can see this, you can be excited to be in a test. Then, then to enjoy when you are in blessing. Because you know very well that there is a glory that follows a test. You will be excited understanding that whatever you are going through has been allowed by God for you. So that you become qualified for the, glo for the glory that is coming. I found that all of us, we must pay the price. Tell you, what, you, you have to pay the price. There are some things, even if you want to change them by prayer, you won't change them. Because they've been allowed for you. You must go through those things. It's a test for you. You can fast and do everything. But you find that those things are there. You can't change them. them. You can't change them. Many of you are going through a test right so now. So the Bible said, don't be surprised. Tell them, don't be surprised. 
why you are going through that. Wao uko pana licho uko pana lichona. Listen, here we are not the same. That is why even the tests are not the same. Mo are tswane, that's why it go tsana di sa tswane. Another one face a very devastating test. Oh, mo mo uko pana litiko ye ngwe ya utatisa. But how you you respond to it? Mara ka mo go e arabang ka ba arabelang ka ona na ke ona ntwa bo tlo. Hallelujah. Amen. Read again uh, verse 13. Verse 13. Yeah, it's over. But uh-huh. in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, yes. keep on rejoicing so that when his glory fitted with his radiance and splendor is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. Can you hear that? You are carrying Christ's suffering. If you are suffering in Christ, you will reign with him in glory i don't know if you're hearing that i get a radiance that need to be manifested on you can you see when you are suffering with christ wabona ke utaisha le christ matata mai male gona whatever you are going through This is a test for you. To check. If you mean business. Or read first Peter 1 verse 7. You will understand that you, the trial of your faith. It's just there for your faith to be strengthened. It's more than you know the final of your goal. Of it's more than because of the results that you get. Can you just read verse 7 Mama 1 Peter 1 7. I want us to read scriptures. Peter 1 Peter 1 7. Read scriptures. You say what? Peter wa pele 1. Because what you are going through now You're asking yourself I've prayed I've asked God about this That one might be a test if you rejoice You make it a test Amen and you'll pass it And auto pass or to Verse 7 it is yes. so that the genuineness of your faith which is much faith. more precious than yes. gold which is perishable even though tested and purified by fire may be found to result in your praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ you heard that there will be a revelation of Jesus Christ what i was seeing what happened in luke 4 Genekile chapter 4. We read Luke 4 from verse 1 to 2. Look up for verse 1 le 2. Look for. Look up for from verse 1 to 2. Verse 1 verse 2. It says then Jesus reaches being filled with the Holy Ghost. Atleti kamo yo mogetha. Return from the Jordan. Wela we are at Jordan. Was led by the Spirit. I saw kamoya into the wilderness. I ale hana thing. You can see the verse 2 yeah, says verse two. being tempted for 40 days I alikwa machacha 40 but the devil got diabolos and in those days he ate nothing and afterward when it they ended they had ended he was hungry ere machachi a wa ka ufela si je silo are a fetsa go ikona machachi a wa a swara ke ta if you read here you see that it was god holy spirit ha o bala motla le more ke moyo moghetwa who led jesus in that test ya lenga isa jesu re yo likwa i mean it's not issues of satan tempting jesus as it aba cha ro satan o tela ta lika lika jesus he was filled with the holy spirit na te chi ka moya wa modimo after he was filled with the holy spirit ka mra ora a ta le ka moya wa modimo moya wa modimo wa moisa le hana te the holy spirit didn't lead him to the city moya wa modimo wa moisa to robong the holy spirit lead him to the city moya wa modimo o ile wa moisa le hana te if you read verse 13 there ao ba la mola go verse 13 na na mola when he came back Read verse 13 mama when he came back ah huta o ba ah boya from being tempted atra go likwa you will see the difference there le tlo mona papana jesus was just filled jesus na tle this time read mara ghetho le verse 13 yes 
when the devil had finished every temptation he yes. temporarily left him until a more opportune time 14 then jesus went back to galilee in the power of the spirit and the news about him spread through the entire region and he began teaching in their synagogues is 14 eh? yes so you are reading 14 read 14 Then Jesus went back to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit and the news about him spread through the entire region. Can you see the difference? Jesus after he was baptized, he was filled by the Spirit. Jesus ka mrawa o kolobetsa o ile a tatswa ka moya wa motheng. The Spirit that filled him. Moya o moteching. Leadeth him to the desert. Wa mo isale hana teng. Because once you are filled by the spirit. Ka ra ha o ka tala ka moya wa motheng. The first place to go is a desert. Nto ya mathomo ya o yona ke le hanate. But when he came back from passing the test. He was not only filled by the spirit. He was having the power of the spirit. In other words there were things he was changing by the power of the spirit. After that test. After he passed the test. Kamra oro re apase moliko wola. The Holy Spirit in him was making him to do things. O ile wa dira ra khono dira dilo. And the fame went everywhere. And a go tsebega ga ya ga ya go tlelele. You know most of the time we don't know when we are filled by the Spirit. Anche a ngata re tsebega re tletse ka moya wa modimo. Is for the Holy Spirit to lead us to a test. O tlelo re moya wa modimo o re ise re o likwa. So that we can be able to use that holy spirit or the holy, holy spirit use us so the power was around it no matale na le gona ga o people began to be affected by that power but to more affect you aka matawe listen tell it chang there is no glory without a test o sina mo le tell but there is no glory go botse mo tlhola ga fa tsa ona le tsa Some of you you are questioning. What is happening with you? Because you are Christian. You are filled by this spirit. You know you are filled. What's about teaching? That's why you have been led to that test. That's why we see to kara moliko wona wo. That's why you have been led to that test. That's why we see to kara tiko e swanang le yo. But after this church. Marakamra wa service yake. I believe you will express the power of the spirit. Ke tumelo ro tla kopana le matla mo yo mogetwa. There are things you will be able to change. I don't know if you are hearing me. Na ke se bore le ntwana. Look here. Tele chang. When Jesus was coming back. Ha tshe sona boya. The first thing he was experiencing was people were possessed. Nto ya mathomo na kopana le yona ke batho ba ne ba tetse ka moyemile. The power in the of the spirit and a began to push those spirits away. Wa thomo gapela mimo ya ila ka thoko. You cannot be a Christian and entrusted by power without a test. O ka se be mo pholoso wa fi wa mata ro a we wena wa muse. You can be a Christian and obey the Bible because of the spirit of God. O ka ba mo pholoso go ba la Bible ka ba ka moyo. But for you to change mara we wena o go no change di emo tsa batho for you to fight the devil you must pass the test you must pass your test can you leave other people you pass your test can you leave the matters of other people you pass your test when jesus came back let's read 14 again i want to because that's what will happen to many of us here today. let's look at that 14 it says verse 14 uh-huh. Is Then so, Jesus went back to Galilee. Yes. In the power of the Spirit. Yes. And the news about him spread through the entire region. The news about him Saba ka yena. The entire region. Ja tsamaya tulong yela ka moka. Can you ask your neighbor how many people knows you? Which some to lenga ve ke batho ba ka e ba utseba. This is a story. How many people knows what you are doing with oh, because of God? Ke batho ba ka e ba tsebang ke wena o di diang ka lebaka la modimo. Ke re just ask your neighbor. Ngo bo tsho mthola ga ofe. What what is the news about you? Di taba ka wena di reng. If the news about you, you people are talking about because you have raped someone. Efe batho ba bolela ka wena kudukudu ka o ba no ile ba ka tamotho mongwe. 
maybe you have killed someone the whole village knows that you are a good liar this is not the power of the spirit I pray that today God have to advertise you by the power of the spirit when you leave this church if, if you believe shout hallelujah let me take you to Genesis 16. Maybe you will understand what I'm talking about. If you read from verse 1, Genesis 16, Genesis 16, verse 1, it says what? Now, now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had born him no children. And she had an Egyptian maid servant whose name was Hagar. Two, so Sarai said to Abraham, See now the Lord, see now the Lord has restrained me from being bearing children. Please go into my mate. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarah. Can you see that verse there? Abraham, Abraham heeded. Okay, three, Abraham Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar. And here it was a story. Sarah by herself now. She went to Hagar and said, Hagar, come here. This is my husband. Now it's also your husband. Can you read verse 4, Mama? He went in to the bed of Hagar and she conceived and when she realized that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress regarding Sarai as insignificant because of her infertility. So you can see that after she was taken by Sarai to Abraham, she, after that, she, she conceived she began to despise Sarai. She forget that she was taken. She was taken. She was not married. She was a servant. She despised the mistress. When the mistress began to see that a, a maid, she's becoming strange. The mistress began to maltreat her. Maltreat and the Bible says she ran away. When she ran away, already she was pregnant. And this pregnant, she's running with it away. But you could see that she met an angel there. When she met the angel, the angel asked, where are you going? You know, there's something that, you know, I was reading there. It says, the angel says, uh, you made of Sarai. Let's, let's read there. Let's read. Okay. Verse 7, it says, now, Verse seven. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness. All right, verse 8. And verse he eight. said, Hagar, Sarai's Hagar, maid. Sarai. Hagar, Sarai's maid. Even when she has run away, she Lela was still a maid. And it says, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. Look at verse 9. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. And then the angel of the Lord said to her, just, just read verse 10. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, mm -hmm. I will greatly multiply your descendants so that they will be too many to count. Listen to this. The promise that this Hagar found from the angel was, you know, you will be a mother of many, many children. 
But the first thing that you need to do is to return and submit. How can you return and submit to someone who is really maltreating you? What she was supposed to be going to do is to pass the test, to humble herself. She's supposed to go back and humble herself. And when she's humbling herself, is that the Lord will multiply her generation. Listen to this. Already she was out saying, I will never go back. But when she was told, if you go back, know that the child you are carrying is a boy. And that boy will have descendants. And that is that will multiply them. That says the Lord. In other words, there was no any other nation when she's outside of Sarai's house. But nations will come if she can go back and pass it. Sometimes God wants us to go back where we have failed and we pass the test. Then. When we are humbling ourselves, then, the Lord will lift us. There will be issues of multiplying. On that day, she knew the size of the child. She was told that the child will be called. Ishmael means God hears. God saw her persecution. Her persecution must not take her away. Her persecution must humble her. Because she's the one who started it. This person has been taken by the choice of a mistress. And brought Inside the bedroom of the master. And from there she forgot where she came from. But her blessing was there. Let me try to tell you. Don't be pregnant with something. And forget where you come from. I don't know if you are hearing me. Don't be pregnant with something. And see where you come from as an enemy. Because where you come from, that's where your test is. For you to be qualified to produce the best, you must pass the test there. And you will be approved. I can see some people where, where you are, you are even tired. But you are facing a task. I'm here to tell you. Don't leave that place. Until God says it. I don't know if you are hearing me. Don't leave the place where you are. Until God speaks. There will be a time. Where you will be exalted. Exaltation is coming. Right now. Pass the test. Because you are supposed to go through. I don't know if you are hearing me. Sometimes when we go through tough times, we ask ourselves, is God if God is away? To Sarai, you will see that when Hagar was gone, God was watching. I don't know if you are hearing me. Even when Hagar was outside in the desert, God found her. He said, you cannot hide from the eyes of God. I don't know where you are. But God is aware of your situation. Just pass that test. Don't get out. Don't fall down. Rise up and move forward. Because where you are going, God wants to direct you. God wants to bring his glory. The glory of God is about to be visible this month. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Can you just look at the situation where going back it will be like a shame. And you find God is speaking, go back. Go back and rectify it. Go back and fix it. If you can fix it, that's where, that's where I need you to fix it so that you will be responsible with abilities. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes God will never entrust us with certain assignments unless we fix we fix what he wanted us to fix. It was an issue of humbling herself. I was sorry, Master. I was wrong. So that Ishmael will be Ishmael. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are some people who are listening to me here. They are asking themselves Is it test what they are facing? Because if you rejoice, you make it a test. Just rejoice on what you are facing. You are making it a test. And and after that, God will glorify himself. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture here. Maybe you will understand what I'm saying. If you read Jeremiah 17 verse 10, you will see that God tests the heart and give according to each heart the results of our deeds. In Jeremiah 17 verse 10, read. Jeremiah 17 verse 10. Verse 10. Yes. I, the Lord, search and examine the mind. I test the heart to give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. Listen to this. Uh, I don't know how I can tell you this. Many people came to me. They were asking that I must, I mean, even when I travel everywhere. They were asking that uh, I must open their spiritual eyes. I've been in many places I had that kind of question. If you read verse 10, it says, I, the Lord, I'm the one who decide. Because because I test the heart. You know, God, God God will look at your heart whether you are fit for your eyes to be open. Sometimes people think we are the one to anoint you. When God says I must anoint you, when I'm doing it, it's not me doing it, it's him. I don't know if you are hearing me. Say, I the Lord, I give to each one according to his deeds. I test the heart. Before you ask something, check when your heart. Tell them, before you ask something, when can you check your heart? When God tests our hearts, what are we going to do after we got what we want? He found that it's not worth it for us to give us everything we are praying for. That's why in the beginning I told you that, that is why it's not your prayer. Even last week I was saying your prayer can bring anything to yourself. It's the Lord who decides. He look at your heart and see if I give you this, it will be a blessing or a curse. Many of our hearts, we need to change them. If you want to see, when Saul met Samuel, after Samuel prophesied, for the prophecy to come to pass, God changed his heart. In fact, our heart must be suitable for the blessing that is coming. I don't know if you're hearing me. After the prophecy, when he turned from there, the heart was changed. And from there, 
the last thing was ah, this man can even prophesy like Chama Felicio no ashu we wa prophet leba prophet he passed the test of that time by agreeing to go with his servants to the man of God. And when the man of God is given prophecy, it was not over. God changes his heart. All that Samuel spoke came to pass. I'm praying that God helped to change your heart so that whatever we say here, it will come to pass. Pass in your life. I don't know if you are hearing that. Listen to this. It takes God to allow you also to pass that test. If God doesn't want you to pass a test, you can still fall in sin and lack the glory. The Bible says, they have all sinned and they lack the glory. You can fall in a test, you find yourself in sin, or you rise up from sin and pass the test, you find the glory. I don't know if you're hearing that. So there's a glory that is seen. I don't know if you're hearing that. I want to pray for you today. That your heart must be ready for what God wants to do with your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let your heart seize the glory. Let your heart seize the glory. Sometimes it's God you need to know this. It's God who sustains us now, in tough times. There were times where people would say, ah, truly you are called. Some people are saying, this, ah, my God is called. I said, it's called. Because after they've seen what I went through, and they are surprised I'm still preaching. I mean, if you go through some things, you can stop what you're doing, isn't it? So, no, you are determined by the challenge you're facing. So it's God who have to prepare your heart. When your heart now is organized by him to pass the test, he would allow you, remember, even in temptation. The Bible says it's not about what you can handle. And he says, he will open, open the doors for you. He will open a space for you so that you go through. It also happened in test. I don't know if you are hearing me. Look what happened to Abraham when God tested him to Mount Moriah. You could question what was in the mind of Abraham. Abraham said, if I tell Sarah about this boy, we will fight. Let, 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 us, let us just go. But it didn't end there. You know, I was looking at this story when they were together with Isaac in the bush now. And they are climbing the mountains together. And they left the servants. When they move forward, that boy ah, said, ah, we are together. So where is the sacrifice? And he just look at the boy. And he passed the, te the test. God will provide. I'm doing what he said. He will provide. There are times where situations are like that. You don't know what to do. You, you are like you are losing all. But you must say God will provide. I can lose this today. But God can bring something tomorrow. When you pass the test, you can be challenged to lose your car. You become excited that God has allowed it. But to have depression. Thinking about what is happening. If you pass the test, you will rejoice. You will know a better car is coming. When you are getting regrets of letters that are saying they cannot take you. 
when you pass the test you know you are climbing up to a mountain of provision you are like sacrificing more but God will provide I see God providing for someone after that test after that pain I see God providing I say he's providing for someone here can you receive the grace of God and the glory of God today God is about to provide the glory I mean the glory the works of God is about to manifest in your life if you believe shout out Hallelujah. You know when I'm speaking with you after all the tests my God sometimes you go through something that you even ask yourself it's like I'm lost you reach a level where you say ah, my life is like there's no movement it's like I'm not going forward or backward you don't know God is preparing something sometimes when you are going through that our God is preparing the way a way where there's no way I don't know if you are hearing me when Moses Moses faced the test when the children of Israel were crying I said look at them they are coming and in front they were saying see God spoke something which when we look at it sometimes we feel it is impossible to do God said Moses move forward can I tell you today? It's like they say Egyptians behind you. And they see in front of you. But I'm here to say move forward. Don't look at the sea. Don't look back where you come from. You are going to find a way where there is no way. If you believe shout hallelujah. When the Christians pass this test they go through where there is no going through. They enter a level where there is stagnation. They go, they find breakthrough where there is nothing. I see you passing that test. You have been here asking God what will happen. But I am here to tell you I see you passing that test. God is about to give you something. He's changing your heart. And the breakthrough is coming. If you believe shout hallelujah. James 1 verse 12. Jacobo 1 12. He said what? He said I want to stop there. I don't want to stop there. James 1 verse 12. Read, Mama. Jacobo 1. Verse 12. Verse 12. Blessed. Ere. Blessed, happy, spiritually, prosperous, favored by God is the man who is steadfast under trial and perseveres when tempted. For when he has passed the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Mm, look at that verse. Blessed. The crown. Blessed, there's a crown. After you go through that test, it is the Lord who will say enough. It's the Lord who will approve. He will say enough. When people are still speaking about you, that what you are going through is as good as is better when you were dead. And the Lord will say to the situation, enough. Because you are proved to get a crown. You know, I understand why the Bible says crown. Because you can't hide what the Lord will do. 
Everybody who looks at you will see what the Lord has done. Because the crown will wait on your head. Whoever recognizes you will see the glory of God upon your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Look here. After you have been approved, it means by God, it means you'll go through situations to extend that people will talk about you. Have you been in a situation where people are talking about you? Where people are saying, ah, in your family, forget. Ah, no, there's nothing that will happen to you. And when God approves, he stops everything and brings you to a level and do something that people will say, but truly you are working with God. I'm praying today, this is a prayer for you, that God will give you something that will make people to worship your God. I said they are about to worship your God. I see you coming out of a test. You are coming out of your test. I say you are passing your test. I say you are passing your test. There is something that I have read when I am concluding. Go and read the whole Acts 4. After the disciples were caught, the Bible says it's after they did a miracle. And then the man who was 40 years standing as a sign of the miracle they did. The Sanhedrin didn't know what to do. Because the evidence was there. They didn't know what to do now. The evidence was clear that this people... And the Bible says, when they look at them, they recognize that those people are the ones who work with Jesus. And the evidence was there. And the Bible says, what is it that we can do? They asked each other questions. And they answered, there's nothing we can do. Let's do one thing. Let's threaten them. And say they must never speak about this name. Because when they speak about this name, it backfires on us. And the Bible says they threaten them. And then they released them. When they went away, they Baba went to pray. Bila, and began to say, we know this threat. We know what we are facing. It's for you, God. It's for you, Jesus. And the Bible says, the place where they were began to shake. And they were filled by the Holy Spirit. These are the people who were filled by the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled in the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled in the Holy Spirit. So you can question what was happening to these people. In other words, there was overflow in there. That's why the foundation of the place began to shake. I want to tell you this. There have to be an overflow. There have to be an overflow of the spirit. Overflow of the finances. Overflow of everything. The foundation of Satan was shaped because you are passing the test. So I'm passing the test. The foundation must change. I don't know if you are hearing me. It's like I'm seeing you coming with the car. With that car. And people began to question. We know when were you approved by God to get something like this you are about to shake the foundation of where you are 
I see a foundation shaken. Your friends they begin to question you. What happened to you? You say, hey, it's the spirit of the living God. You say, it's the spirit of the living God. If you believe, shout hallelujah.